Good morning, happy Sabbath, church family. I know people are here. Let's try it again. Good morning, happy Sabbath, church family. All right. On behalf of the Woody Estate Church, we are so glad that you are here joining us for our church service. And um, just want to mention a couple of things. I know for the past couple of weeks, it's probably been kind of warm in here. We are working on the AC, for sure, but it's, it's getting fixed. But uh, so I just ask you to think cool thoughts, thinking at the beach or in Alaska. I don't know what you want to think about, but just think positive thoughts. But we'll get this place nice and cool uh, very soon. But we are glad that you have taken the opportunity that even though it's hot, come and worship with the Lord Jesus Christ today in this place at Whittier SA Church. So we're so glad that you're here with all of us. Just want to go through a couple of announcements with you guys as always. Um, we have started back to have our Sabbath school class for adults right now in person. At 10 o'clock. So wake up a little bit earlier, get here, be a part of the discussion, uh, and join us and be a part of the Sabbath school class for our uh, adults right now. As for kids, we're going to hopefully get that back up and started in August. But as for right now, for the month of July, we're doing the adults for in-person in English at this time. And then we'll make an announcement very soon about our Spanish Sabbath school as well that's coming up uh, as, a, as a church. But for right now, for our kids, make sure you uh, join the Zoom links to be a part of the Sabbath school class uh, for each age group. Uh, they're on the announcements so you can see them, but make sure you know about those that are come uh, for those Sabbath school classes. So join them, be a part of it. But hopefully we get back to a portion where we'll have Sabbath school class in person uh, as a church. Um, do not forget your offering uh, as well. You can uh, go to AdventistGiving.org, uh, type in Windy SA Church. Or you can download the app, Adventist Giving, uh, and look for the Whittier SDA Church. If you're here, you can give your tithes and offering in the front, in the container, or you can mail it here to the church uh, during the week if you want to, and we'll take it that way as well. And we thank you so much for your contributions uh, for our offering at, at this church. If you don't know about this by now, uh, Camp City Falls has reopened, and they are doing family caps uh, for, uh, for anyone in SoCal or around to come to their Camp City Falls uh, for the entire weekend. Uh, it's $99 for each person, but it's a great experience to uh, eat the food, uh, fellowship, and enjoy each other's time and company. Um, so next weekend is the last weekend of their family camp. So if you're interested in going, look for me, uh, and I will actually give you the applications, but next week is the last week of their family camp. But starting tomorrow here at our church, we have our vacation Bible school beginning back here at the church. Uh, it starts at 6 o'clock, ends at 8. We only can allow 40 kids to participate, but we are, right now we have spots still available. So if you know any kids that want to be a part of it or anyone that wants to help out, please reach out. We are going to be getting this going. It starts tomorrow. We're excited for having all the kids here to do VBS once again in person. So it starts tomorrow, and it's on Monday and Tuesday. It's only a three-day event, so don't forget that three days only. So if you want to know any more about it, reach out to me, uh, and I will send you the link to register. But next week... So next week, tomorrow, VBS starts uh, for our church. Um, final things, uh, birthday shout-outs are next Sabbath. If you know someone had a birthday in the month of July and you want to give them a birthday shout-out, reach out to me so we can put the picture up on the screen, give them a birthday shout-out next Sabbath for our church service here at the church. All right? Um, final things, if you are interested in joining a uh, weekly uh, life group uh, event, uh, there was a slide up there that was before. They meet on Tuesdays. They just started last week, Tuesday, but it's on Zoom as well. If you want more information about the life group, come see me, and I'll let you know more about it. But next, uh, their life groups are on Zoom on Tuesdays um, from at 6 o'clock, I think, as well. Um, with that being said, and today also, after our service, we will have our fellowship luncheon um, outside. So feel free to stay in fellowship and enjoy some food prepared already um, for all you guys at this church. As you guys have seen, a lot of things have picked up back in the uh, world and we are dealing with still the coronavirus uh, and there has been a spike. I just didn't announce about this for sure. If you are here, we do ask that you please wear a mask whether you're vaccinated or, vaccinated or not and please don't social distance with one another as much as possible. I do understand, we love to connect and teach us smiling faces, but right now we want to make sure we stay safe as a church, all right? So, but with that being said, I ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes to me before we go into a song service portion of our service, and let's invite the Holy Spirit into our worship here 
Amen for those at home right now at this time. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for the opportunity to uh, just worship, connect, grow, and become closer to you more than ever. So God, at this time, I pray and ask that whether we had a trying week, a trying couple of days or a couple of months, whatever it may be, Father God, I pray and ask that whatever has been on our shoulders and on our hearts at this time, we uh, give them to you. We ask and know that you will take care of them according to your will because you always have told us in your word that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And so God, I simply ask that that, that passage just keeps being still into our hearts and in our minds of how much you love and you care about us. So thank you so much, Father God, that you have given us a day like today. Today, that we can forget about all that and focus on you. Reconnect with you, regrow with you, and just be in one with you. We ask that those that are here and those watching at home, may this service be a blessing and uplifting towards them, Father God. And we ask that you be with our speaker today. May the words that he speaks be a message of encouragement and hope for all of us that are here today. Thank you so much for all that you've done. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. At this time, we're going to have a wonderful song service by our wonderful family member, Petty Gibb. And we've got people online, but today's song service is going to be just a little bit different. And we're going to try something. I don't think we've done this before, but our song service will partially, partially be online as well, just like we're partially online right now. So I'll be here singing live with you all. And we have the music that will be online. So we're going to try this, okay? <laughs> First song we're going to sing is Jesus at the center of. Let's sing. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be. It's always been you, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus at the center of it all, Jesus at the center of it all, from beginning to the end, it will always be. It's always been you, Jesus, Jesus, nothing else matters, nothing in this world will do, because Jesus, you're at the center. center of my life. Jesus, be the center of my life. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, nothing else matters.
Jesus, you're the center. Everything revolves around you. Jesus, you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus, be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you, from my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center, it's all about you, yes, it's all about you, from my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center, it's all about you. It's all about you. Jesus, be the center of your church. Amen. Jesus, be the center of your church. And every knee will bow. And every tongue shall confess you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Nothing else matters. Nothing in this world. Jesus, you're the center. Everything revolves around you. Jesus, you at the center of it all. Amen. Jesus is not only the center, but he's also the cornerstone. Amen. Do you remember what verse that is found in where it talks about Jesus being the cornerstone? It's in Ephesians, Ephesians 2, verse 20. And it says, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstones he's not only the center but he's also that foundation that we have and if i at this time i would like for you all to join me in standing this will be our opening song and we're going to sing um, cornerstone can i get that a little bit louder please thank you My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. 
hands to hide his face. I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil.
Okay, so we're going to be doing a Bible trivia. We're going to do Pastor Fell versus Audrey. So we're going to see who's going to win. Man and alive. That's competition. I'm scared. Are you scared, Audrey? Uh, no. Not quite, huh? Got confidence. <laughs> So we're going to read the questions, and then they're going to be like a alphabetical, like A, B, C, D, and y'all put it on your whiteboard screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess I'll read the first one. And it says, what was the name of John the Baptist's mother? A, Elizabeth, B, Brittany, C, Esther, or D, Mary Magdalene? Are you guys ready for the second question? Yeah? Okay. Second question. Where was Jesus born? A. Los Angeles. B. Bethlehem. C. Gaza. Or D. Canada. Are we ready? Okay, let's see the mm. answers. B, yes, he was born in Bethlehem. Yay. Okay, you each have two points. All right, next question. This one's kind of hard. You know, Pastor Bell, you, you might not know this one, okay? Thank you. <laughs> Who betrayed Jesus? A, Judas, B, Peter, C, Daniel, or D, Elijah? Judas. Oh, okay. You wrote it too quickly. You, you, well, you didn't remember, know that. Peter also betrayed him. Oh. Oh. That's all right. I, I didn't. I didn't have these answers. These are not my answers. <laughs> these, <laughs> these are, are questions. These, these are loose ends. So, <laughs> y'all want to bring it up to him? Go ahead. Maybe we should both get a point because they both betrayed him. Oh. Okay. Say that again. Maybe we should both get a point because they both betrayed him. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, so let's go to question four, and you guys are both tight, okay? So question four. What book in the Bible tells the story of the river that cleansed Naaman's leprosy? A, Numbers, B, Psalms, C, John, or D, Second Kings? Do the question again. <laughs> what book in the Bible tells the story of the river that cleansed Naaman's leprosy? I'll read the uh, answers again. A, you guys want it? No? Okay. <laughs> Number four. What book in the Bible tells the story of the river that cleansed Naaman's leprosy? A, Numbers, B, Psalms, C, John's, or D, Second Kings? Okay, do that one more time, the, 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 the choices. <laughs> okay. A, Numbers. B, Psalms, C, John, or D, 2 Kings? You ready? Okay, mm -hmm. let's see the D. answers. D, oh, Pastor put A. It was actually D, 2 Kings. Oh. Oh. Well, that's good. It was, it was a slip up. Good. Okay. Hey guys. On that one, can't we? <laughs> Next question. We gotta get this one right. And then we're gonna like leave Pastor in the dust, Audrey. You know, we gotta get this one. Okay. Next question. Who was saved when thrown in the lion's den? A Paul. B Adam. C Daniel or D Levi. Have it? You ready? 
Yes. T, but D, but Daniel starts with a D. <laughs> Good, that's good. All right, you guys both got it. Next question. Okay. Who was swallowed, oh no, question six. Who was swallowed by a big fish for disobeying God's orders? A, Samuel, B, Michael, C, Jonah, or D, Ruth? One more time. The qu all of it? Just that question. Okay. Who was swallowed by a big fish for disobeying God's orders? And the, and the choices? Uh, A, Samuel, B, Michael, C, Jonah, or D, Ruth? There we go. You ready? Okay. Yes. yes, it was C, it was Jonah. So Audrey's still leading by one point. <laughs> All right, last question to take everything, okay? <laughs> okay. How many books start with E? How many, How many books, books of the Bible e? start with the letter E? Like E, E? A yeah. B, e, D, e? Yeah, E. Okay, E. All How right. How many books? Yeah, how many books? So you could probably count them. If you know your books of the oh. Bible, go blank. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> the fr uh, A is nine, B is six, C is eight, and D is five. Yeah. <laughs> Can we have the options again, please? Yeah. A, nine, B, six, C, eight, and D, five. C, six. You guys both got it right. You guys got the letter wrong, but yeah, B was six. But she got six. Oh. C was eight. <laughs> Sorry. But you guys both what got it right. What was, what was B? Six. Okay. So you guys both got it right. They're Exodus, Ezra, Esther, Ecclesiastes, Ezekiel, and Ephesians. <laughs> so Audrey won by one point. So guys, give it up for her, for Audrey. And Pastor. Wow. And Pastor. And Pastor. <laughs> Just watch out for Audrey. If she, uh, uh, you know, uh, gets you into a contest, mm -hmm. you better be ready, okay? Thank you, Audrey. You are welcome. Thank you. You did a good job. Good for you. Good for you. I can't volunteer for VBS this year. I take care of my own kids all day. I'm already tithing. What else do they want from me? Kids just don't get me. I don't know anything about the Bible. I am not a juice and crackers man. My kids are already grown up. I can't sing. I can't carry a tune. I volunteered last decade. I need less stress in my life. I'm allergic to glitter. Kids are girls. I don't have enough vacation days. Let's be honest, you know I'm teaching our kids. Look, we've heard it all before, so cut the sweats and sign up for BBS. I think God called me to the park lot ministry. <laughs> oh man, you know, I, uh, I saw that video, my friend sent it to me because we were talking about VBS this week and, uh, and we, were, we were watching the video together and I just started laughing because some of those excuses I personally have heard and I've kind of made a couple of them beginning in my part of being a part of VBS. But you know what, we went through a year and a half of not having vacation Bible school. This thing went down. Okay, we went through a year and a half of not having vacation Bible school. And last year... We did the first time ever our Vacation Bible School show. And man, what an awesome experience that was. But this year, we have our kids coming back. And I'm excited about that because it's not the same doing a show 
when you get to see the kids' expressions and see them get engaged and excited of being here and being a part of it. But we need help, okay? It's not just going to be done by myself and the children ministry. We need help. We need participants. So parents, if your kids come to VBS, do not drop them off and drive away, okay? Stay. Be a part of it. Our young people here, sign up and help. We need help with leaders. We need help in stations. Whatever it is, we need help. But if you want your kid to be part of Vacation Bible School, or you know someone in your neighborhood that needs something to do uh, for the next three days, some activity, they've been cooped inside the house, let them sign up for VBS. So, as always, we have our number, okay? If your kid wants to join VBS or you know someone that wants to join Vacation Bible School, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. I want you to text to 562-380-1132. That's it. Just text that number and type VBS. We will send you the link to register them, and we want them to come. But we also want your help. So remember, Vacation Bible School starts tomorrow. Tell your friends, tell your family members to come and be a part of it. It starts at 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. You do not want to miss out. We're glad to have VBS back. But if you know someone wants to be part of VBS, text to that number, and we'll send you registration to be a part of it, all right? Uh, right at this time, we're going to do a family check-in, which we haven't done in some time. And uh, right now, we are going to be introducing, uh, not introducing, but getting to check-in on a family uh, that's very dear to our heart, led to us by uh, Robert Tercios. Good morning, happy Sabbath. No, actually, not morning, it's good afternoon, right? So good afternoon, church, happy Sabbath. Good afternoon, family. Happy Sabbath. How are you guys? We're doing well. Are they on? Are they on? So uh, for those that don't know who you are because you're hiding behind the mask, would you mind introducing yourselves? Sure. Nelson Delator. Haley Delator. So we have Dr. and Dr. Delator here. Uh, and we're checking in with them. I was wondering if we were going to have the whole family. So we're missing three. We're missing two, right? We got Lucas. Everybody knows Lucas? Yeah? Can you raise your hand, Lucas, so they can know where you're at? There you go. These are our little soccer star as well. Uh, where are the other two? Well, one of them is sleeping, and the other one, I think, went with his girlfriend to church. Nice. As long as he has that church, right? That's that's a good thing. So it's been a while since we've actually been here all together, and we're checking in to see our families, how they've been dealing and coping with COVID. Have you guys, what can you guys share uh, as far as have you guys gotten sick? I know you guys are doctors, so what are you seeing in, at the hospital? Anything you guys could share? Sure. Um so I think for us, uh, life wasn't that much different because we still had to go to work. <laughs> um, we, our, our daughter got sick with COVID and, and she's fine now, thankfully, and, and our mother-in-law did as well. We had some family members. Um, we ourselves did not get sick, um, thankfully, even though we, we were caring for patients with COVID. Um, so it, it's it's been a really interesting journey. COVID is a, a very interesting illness. Um, and uh, what happened last uh, uh, January was um, something that I've never experienced before. And it, um, personally for me, it was sad just to see all the, the, the differences in opinion and, and how this illness was, was politicized so much because um, at the end of the day, a virus really doesn't care about your political views, right. and um, and it was just uh, it, it was eye-opening. Honestly, uh, at the hospital, it, it it felt like a war zone. I've never seen anything like that. You know, the emergency room was completely full. There were people that were outside of the hospital. There were floors of intubated patients. Um, it, it was it was it was crazy. I've, I've never seen anything or experienced anything like that. So um, it, it was it was challenging to see um, all that death and, and sorrow and just having 
patients not, not even have their families around because they, they couldn't. Um, having end of life conversations through an iPad with family members or outside of the hospital, it was, it was really heartbreaking. Well, thank you guys for that. That's obviously you guys are frontliners and we really appreciate all the work that you have done. Put yourself at risk many times and then having to worry to come back home. Uh, what can you share? Uh, um, similar things, but right now, like you, met, you, you asked about how COVID's right now. Right now, it's pretty calm. You know, there's a worry about the Delta variant. We haven't seen it too much, even though there's still some patients in the hospital that have COVID. Um, I'm a little worried what will happen in winter and the fall. That we'll see. Um, but you know, thank God right now it's under control. Yeah. So uh, throughout this year, guys, I'm sure you guys have been uh, keeping in touch with uh, and connected with God. I know uh, you've had the opportunity to come and speak, and uh, I think at one point it was completely empty, and we just had the cameras right up front, and you guys spoke, and uh, it was very different than what at least now we have someone actually here, live bodies, right? Uh, it's very different. What other ways have you guys been uh, trying to stay connected and also um, psychologically, emotionally, how have you been dealing with you know, this past year and a half? Um, for me, God is, my relationship with God is so important that I try to make a, you know, the morning, read, a, a read um, either the lesson or something else, um, try to have a, the relationship with God always, that, that's very helpful emotionally and, and I have the trust that he's in control. Yeah, same, same here. I think the, the personal devotional life is, is so important. Um, to, to set that time apart in the morning it just really sets your day and just um, walking hand in high, hand in hand with God you know because at the end of the day he is the one that's going to get us through hardships and you know I think for us as Seventh Day Adventists knowing what's to come you know sort of um, just gives us that preparation and that assurance that, that God is in control wonderful man I love that one last question. I know you've had you have the three kids at different ages. How are they dealing with all of this? Or what can you share as far as maybe tips for the other kids that are might be dealing with issues? With our oldest one is in college, so his like other college kids, part of his college experience was kind of ruined. You know, he had to spend it at home, do classes online. Um, even his he's in corral, so he had to sing in chorale online and um, so but he he has friends from high school and San Gabriel Academy that he still gets together with and he has a community um, so that's important um, I think for Lucas you know friends at home and staying active and uh, he, you know, either soccer skating swimming whatever some type of physical activity yeah. mm -hmm. Else, any, any nuggets of, of uh, wisdom that you guys have acquired or, or something you guys want to share? Wisdom? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think um, relying on God, knowing that He's in control, knowing that not only um, external, He's in control of external things, and uh, in, my, in my own personal things that I need to improve on, he is there, I could go to him for, for help as well. Okay. Yeah. I, I think the, the biggest advice that I would um, give to our church members is to just take care of yourselves. Remember, you only have one body. Um, and uh, protect yourselves, protect others, um, be, be cautious, um, you know, eat healthy, do all, all the things that that is that are recommended by the church um on the same token um you know withhold judgment uh there are people that do everything they can to take care of themselves and still will fall ill um, right now with the delta variant it is extremely contagious it is airborne if you're in the same room as someone you will get it i was talking with my boss yesterday who's a pulmonologist and, and was sharing that information and he was saying that it's interesting that um, for some of the vaccinated people, they don't even have symptoms. They'll, they're positive, but they don't have symptoms. So 
um, just be careful. Uh, just because you yourself may not experience symptoms doesn't mean that you you can spread it to somebody that's vulnerable, like an elderly person or or a baby. So just you know, take care of yourself, take care of others. Um, that that would be the the advice I have to share. And uh, guys, uh, we're gonna go ahead and do a prayer, and then we're gonna see a video. So if you can, uh, if you can kneel where you are, and if not, just bow your heads. And we're going to go ahead and, uh, and pray. Dearly Father, Lord, I get down on our knees, Lord, humbly, Lord, to thank you for the week that you've given, given us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all the many blessings, Lord. Thank you for allowing this family to come here, Lord, and share with us today, Lord. We as a family come together, Lord, to learn from each other, to lean on each other, Lord. And today, more specifically, Lord, we're here to, to thank you, Lord, to fill our hearts with your word, Lord, to be able to continue to connect with you, Lord. I pray for our speaker, Lord, as, as he comes and he gathers his thoughts, Lord. Let those thoughts not be his, Lord, without bias, Lord, but be yours, Lord. May you use him as a vessel to be able to deliver the message that you want, Lord. Let it be your will, and let us be receptive, Lord. Open our hearts and our minds, Lord, to be able to take that message in, Lord, and let us grow with it. Let us not just have it for today, Lord, but for the days to come. And I pray, Lord, that we're here again next week, Lord. I pray for our VBS, Lord, that starts tomorrow, Lord, and our children that so desperately need this connection with you, Lord, and with each other as well. Thank you again for being so wonderful. This is my prayer this afternoon. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Family, now we have a video. Give thanks for the good days. When the traffic lights all turn green, when promotions come and bad habits are broken. Give thanks for warm meals and the company of friends. Give thanks for undeniable blessings and clear direction. When the music floods your soul and the worship songs flow without effort. Give thanks for coffee and clothing and hope that the two never mix. Give thanks for the mother who battles daily in prayer, for the father working three jobs, for the brothers and sisters who build blanket forts and read bedtime stories. Give thanks for sons and daughters and all our family who remind us of what truly matters. Give thanks for the stranger who holds the door open and the lifelong friend who holds you when life is broken. Give thanks for the hard days, for the phone call that brings life crashing down for jobs lost and friendships fallen into conflict. Give thanks for the anger that reminds us we are human and the tears that express more than words can ever fathom. Give thanks, though the pain is overwhelming, your energy spent, your spirit fallen, and your only option is to fall to your knees before your Holy Father and cry out, God, please help me. For in that moment, his power is made perfect. His love is made evident. He becomes your strength, your comfort, and your salvation. Give thanks for the power of redemption from Genesis to Revelation, for the endless promises of a God who would rather sacrifice his son than give up on his children, for nail-pierced hands, for brilliant dawns, for the cool touch of rain and the simplicity of a quiet day, for all things great and small, let us give thanks. Happy this morning to have, I should say, afternoon. We keep having a little problem <laughs> deciding on what part of the day we're in. Anyway, we're just happy today to uh, 
introduce to you our guest speaker, and he's not really a guest. I've known Jimmy Lee for a long time and been delighted to be able to minister with him. We thank you his, his uh, mate is with him. Put your hand up, Mrs. Lee, so we can see your, where you are. There she is. We're just delighted she's been a lifetime educator, and we're just delighted that she can be with them today. Jimmy, come on up. We'd love to have you up here. He's our vice president of the Southern California Conference. And over the years, we just uh, know that Southern California has been a better place for he and his colleagues. The hard work that they've been called upon to do, uh, especially this particular uh, year. So Jim, come and share what's on your heart. May God bless you today as you share God's word. Thank you, Pastor. Good afternoon. Oh, I think you can do better than that. I'm asking you to do better than that. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, great. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. Uh, I'm going to do my best to preach with this on. I need, may need to take a little breath. Is that all right with you? Uh, I want to thank this couple uh, for their service on the front line. And for all of those of you who serve on the front line in whatever capacity, this has been a rough year and few months, hasn't it? And so we praise God and we thank God for his goodness. I want to thank you for your faithfulness. We know it's been difficult. We know it's been a challenge. But we thank you for continuing the journey and continuing to be faithful. I bring you greetings from Elder Salazar. Ella Cress, we have a new treasurer. Her name is Kathleen Diaz. Uh, she's been in for maybe a few months, and I want you to know she is doing an excellent, excellent job. And so we praise God that she's part of the team now. And so we look forward to uh, hopefully better days if we can get through this variant and uh, keep everyone safe. I, I'm, I'm. Unfortunate, we did have one of our pastors who succumbed to COVID uh, this past year. We've had a, a few of our members of our conference to pass away. Um, but despite all of that, we can still say that God is good and is worthy to be praised. And so I, 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 I thank you again for this opportunity. It's always good to be here with my dear friend, Pastor Fell and to visit with him. Uh, I appreciate his ministry. I appreciate his friendship. I love him dearly, and it's just good to be here, Pastor. Thank you so, so much. Now, folks, if I were at my church, we'd be going home in about another 10 minutes. <laughs> but guess what? I'm not at my church. And so I'm just going to do what I can do quickly but let the Holy Spirit lead. Is that all right with you? And just share with, with you what God has placed on my heart. And uh, we will hear, hopefully, from the word of the Lord. And so I, if you have your Bibles, I think it will be up on the screen in a few moments. Uh, we're going to look at the book of Matthew. Then we're going to have prayer and get into our our, our word for today, Matthew chapter 10. Uh, it's good to have my wife here. Uh, she doesn't always uh, get a chance to come. She's a member of the Norwalk Church, and she likes taking my grandchildren there. She never misses church, but we don't have them this weekend. And so she has graciously decided to come and be with uh, her honey bunny. Thank you very much. You like that? All right, you can have it. Matthew chapter 10, and we're going to read, I'm going to read in your hearing verse 27 to 31. Matthew chapter 10, verse 27 to 31, and I'm reading in the New King James Version, and the Word of God says this, Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. And what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. 
And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many, many sparrows. And then the book of Luke, what book did I say? Luke chapter 12. We're going to read, I'm going to read in your hearing Luke chapter 12. We're going to start with verses 3 through 7. Luke chapter 12, verses 3 through 7. The word says this. Therefore, whatever you have spoken in the dark will be heard in the light. And what you have spoken in the ear in the inner rooms will be proclaimed on the housetops. And I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, who after he has killed, has power to cast into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two copper coins, and not one of them is forgotten before God. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are more value than many sparrows. And then verse 22 through 28, I want to read that. Verse 22, and he said to his disciples, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life what you will eat, nor about the body what you will put on. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which have neither storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? Verse 26, if you then are not able to do the least, why are you anxious for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you, even Solomon, in all of his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which today is in the field and tomorrow is thrown in the oven, how much more will he clothe you? O oh, you of what, everyone? Little faith. Let's pray. Father God, we're thankful for this opportunity to open up the word. We understand that spiritual things are spiritually discerned, and we can't even understand the spirit, uh, the word of God, except you send us your Holy Spirit. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, for you are my strength and my redeemer. Amen. The sparrow people. The sparrow people. At the marketplace, during the time of Christ, the chiefest and the most common livestock were sparrows. They were as common as the pigeons you find in Los Angeles today. Jesus, using them as a parable for mankind, says, are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? You see, a farthing was just three-eighths of a cent. And so two sparrows were sold for less than a penny. Then you had the food for less special of Luke chapter 12, verse 6, where you could buy five sparrows, five sparrows, for the price of four. The extra one was thrown into the bargain as having no value at all. Sparrows 
are said to be social creatures. They are primarily carnivorous by nature, but will, will eat seeds and fruits and berries. They are known to fly between 24 and 31 miles per hour. They're considered to be very small, usually between four and eight inches. Unimpressive, unassuming, and to some, unimportant. Sparrows are not majestic like the eagles with its white head feathers and its eight wing, uh, feet wingspan. Nor do they have the long, elegant legs like the blue heron. Nor do they soar through the air and through the wind like the seagull. Nor do they stretch out in a posed position like the cormorant that we see. These birds were largely ignored and greatly abused. But nothing that Jesus ever made can be called common or unclean. For at creation, everything had a reason for its existence. Did you not know that at creation, which God made the little tiny sparrow, that he put in the neck bone, he put in the neck more individual bones than he put in the neck of a giraffe? The value of a thing is not on the outside, not by the cover. But the value of a thing is on the inside. Every creature of God is good for something. Therefore, the Bible says, what God has cleansed, call not thou uncommon. There, where only the eyes of God can see, where God only can judge, he sees human value in the least of mankind. Even the fifth sparrow, which was bought for the price of four, is of value to God. The sparrow is but a symbol of God's love for all mankind, regardless of where they are in the sociological totem pole of life. That's why the Bible says in Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. Matthew says, Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? The psalmist says, know that, know that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Isaiah says, see how I have engraved you in the palm of my hand. Goes on to say, you are precious in my eyes, and I love you. Talking about man. Jeremiah says, I have loved you with an everlasting love, and therefore with loving kindness I have drawn you. Romans says, but God, for God commended his love toward us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Peter says, no need not that, you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Fear not, therefore, you are of more valuable than many, many sparrows. As the Holy Spirit has chosen the dove to be its symbol, Jesus has chosen the sparrow to be his symbol. In the ancient ceremonial system, when a person came to be pronounced cleansed of leprosy, he presented two sparrows. One was chosen to die under the running of water in a bucket. And as the blood of the dead sparrow was sprinkled seven times upon the leopard as he was pronounced clean, then the blood of the dead sparrow was placed upon the wing of the living sparrow and then set free but not so free that he could not see that his, on his wingtips that his freedom cost his companion sparrow his very life. Brothers and sisters, today when I look at my life, sin is a leprosy for which I am condemned to say, unclean, unclean all the days of my life. But I'm thankful this afternoon that Jesus is my sparrow person and his life has set me free. And because of the blood of Calvary, 
I can see the blood-stained drips upon the pathway of righteousness paid for me. And I can cry with, with gratefulness, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, through Jesus, I'm free at last. We're not just free. We're free because Jesus paid the ultimate price. And he who the Son sets free is free indeed. The Bible says, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of, of God? Ye are not your own, for ye have been bought with a price. The precious blood of Jesus. You and I are the sinful lepers for whom Jesus died by the running of water by his riven side. I am a sinful leopard, sick with, room, with wounds and bruises and putrefying sores, but healed by the blood of Jesus, my companion sparrow. Isaiah 50, 50, 53 says, He was wounded for our transgression and bruised for our iniquity, and with his stripes we are healed. We sing a song that says, Jesus paid it all. All to him what everyone I owe. Make no doubt about it. Jesus is the God of all the people today. Now Jesus was a familiar but respected friend of the boys on the block. And when the lady touched the hem of his garment, the Bible says that virtue left him and healed her of her disease. Jesus identified himself not just with the high and mighty, but with the lowly that walked the pathway of toil and sweat and tears. He walked with those who, were, who traveled the boulevard of broken dreams and the avenue of disappointment, the upset and the downtrodden, the outcasts and the trouble, the sin-sick people of his day. That's why 2 Corinthians says that he became poor, that we might through his poverty might become rich. Then Jesus says that the hairs of your head are numbered. I want to ask you something. How many of you have sat down one day and decided to count the number of hairs on your head? Huh? I have a dear friend that doesn't have any hair and I said, well you ought to do that because you can do that maybe in an hour and count the number of hairs. I was reading somewhere someday that it says that scientists suggest that the average person has between 100 and 140,000 strands of hair on their head. I don't know. What he's saying is, if X marks the spot where the sparrow falls, then Calvary marks the spot where sinners can find forgiveness and grace for today and hope and peace for tomorrow. Not one sparrow, Jesus says, is forgotten by God. Not one. Not one. Jesus taught this. Jesus said this. Not one sparrow is forgotten. In other words, not one human being is forgotten by God. Not one. Not one. For he says, you are of more value than the sparrow. One theologian says, it's not that God marks the spot where the sparrow falls dead. It's far more. It's that God marks the spot every time the sparrow hops upon the ground. And if God cares like that for sparrows, how much more would he care for you and for me? In the 136th division, of psalm the psalmist begins by telling the story in lyric poetry about god the god who is the god of creation the god who made heaven and earth the sun and the moon and the stars and then he goes on to tell the story about the god who is the god of history the god who rescued israel from egypt and who fought her battles then he goes on to speak of as the God, that, of the God who gives food to all flesh. The God who made the world 
and who controls history is the God that provides for us our daily bread. The God who loves and cares for humankind, for you and me, is seen not only in the omnipotence of creation and in the events of history, he is also seen in the day-to-day -day care of his children. That's why the Bible says in the Psalm, in the 37th division of Psalm, I have been young and now I am old, and I have yet never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. We have to trust him. What did I say? We have to trust him. What did I say? You have to trust him. There are many, many things in our life may be unclear and uncertain and undecided. We may have more questions than we have answers. And there might be times when so much of life seems like stumbling through the fog of difficult circumstances. But we must remember that everything is either caused by God or allowed by God. For all things work together as part of God's unfolding plan of redemption. All we have to do is put our trust in Christ. Christ has the answers. Christ has the solutions. I wonder why 600,000 people had to die. I wonder why 97 people sleeping in a condo at 1 o'clock, 1.15, 1.30 in the morning had to die. I wonder. I don't have the answers for that. We just have to trust God. Those aren't the last events. There will be more before Jesus comes that will make us scratch our, our heads and ask the question, why? Often we find ourselves in the dungeon of despair, as with John the Baptist who asked the question, art thou he should come, or do we look for another? In other words, are you the kind of Messiah we ought to look for? God permits hours of perplexity to come, even in the most worthy and trusted of his children. He wants to strengthen our faith and our trust in him. He wants to develop our, our character for the good of God's cause. There will be those points of crisis in your life and in my life when we won't understand or know what to do or where to go or where to turn, when one all around us are questions but no answers, when it seems that our backs are up against the wall, when our spirits are low and our minds are confused and our hearts are burdened and our souls are weary, everyone will have their moments of doubt and wonder. God's servant Job had his moments. Even Elijah, the prototype of John the Baptist, had his moments of discouragement. Jonah was so angry that he ran away from God. That was part of the quiz this morning. Moses was so grieved over the sins of God's people that he was ready to quit. Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, suffered from a constant rejection by the people of God. God often allows us to see we can't figure ourselves through all the problems in life. There are just sometimes we just got to put our trust and our faith in God and believe that God loves us more than many, many sparrows. Desire of Ages, page 356. Not a sigh breathed, not a pain felt, not a grief pierces the soul, but there, but the, but, but the throb vibrates to the Father's heart. Let me read that again, I'm sorry. Not a sigh breathed, not a pain felt, not a grief pierces the soul, but the throb vibrates to the Father's heart. Art thou he should come, 
or should we look for another? Jesus responds, yes, but I'm not the kind of Messiah you expected. Jesus told John's disciples, you tell John again, tell him that the lame walk and the blind see. If, he has, if he's looking for my credentials as the savior of, man, of mankind, tell him that the lepers are cleansed and the dead are alive and the poor are receiving the good news. Go back. Don't tell John what I am saying. Tell him what I am doing. Don't tell John what I am claiming. Tell him what is happening. When we put our trust and our faith in God, God will see us through. God will see us through. When my wife and I, when we first got married, we worked for the church. I wasn't poor. I was po. That's worse than poor. I made $500 from the Southern, Elder, I made $500 from the Southern California Conference a month. $500 back in 1976. My wife and I got married and we were running a little bit low, you know, in provisions and, and things of that nature. And so we didn't know how things, my wife wasn't working. She, we had just got married and she didn't have a, a, a job yet. Uh, we had just moved to Pasadena. I had 500 a month. And so <clears throat> I said, Lord, I don't know what we're gonna do. No, those were back in the days when you can buy gas for uh, 50, 55 cents a gallon. Somebody ought to say amen to that. <laughs> yeah, almost $5 now. And I remember when gas went to 67, since and I told my wife and I told the conference I'll never ever pay 67 cents for a gallon of gas. I'll stop driving before I pay a gallon. <clears throat> well, that wasn't true. <clears throat> and my wife were driving, we were driving back and forth <clears throat> and uh, we were looking at the, uh, the wedding cards that we had received. You remember that? We were driving this little five-speed 1974 Toyota and we didn't have much money elder and we were just she was just reminiscing and we were looking at the thing and said oh this person was there and that person was there and this person was there and all of a sudden she opened one envelope and a a money order fell out for forty dollars now you don't say wow now but back in 1977 you said wow that was a lot of money. Oh, I can get some bread, I can get some jelly, I can get some peanut butter, I can put a little gas in my car. Come on and say amen, somebody. What's my point? Whatever it is you're going through, when you put your trust in Jesus, he will see you through. It may not be the way that you think it should be. It may not even be the way that you want it to be. But he will see you through. Because you are of more valuable than many, many sparrows. You just have to stretch out upon God's word and stand on the promises of God. And he will see you through whatever difficulty you're going through. In other words, what he did in Galilee, he can do for you and me today. In the early spring of 1905, Sevilla Martin and her husband were vacationing in a little city called Elmira, New York. They met and developed a deep friendship with a family called the Doolittles, the Doolittles. A godly couple, Mrs. Doolittle had been bedridden for almost 20 years. Her husband was an incurable cripple who had to propel himself to and from work on a wheelchair. But despite their affliction, they lived a happy Christian life. One day, while both were, were visiting together, Mrs. Martin turned to Mrs. Doolittle and asked, what was the secret for your bright hopefulness? 
What is the secret for your happiness? What is the secret for you always being optimistic and knowing that everything will ultimately work out all right? Mrs. Doolittle replied, his eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches me. That response gripped the heart and fired up the imagination of Mrs. Martin that she went home and she penned the following words. Why should I be discouraged? Why should the shadow come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Let not your heart be troubled. Hidden his tender word I hear. And resting on his goodness, I lose my doubt and fear. Though by the path he leadeth, but, not, but one step I may see. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. His eye. It's on the sparrow, so I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow, so I know he watches me. You and I are his by creation and by redemption. You are of great value in his sight. You may wander from him from time to time. You may even choose a different path, but you are God's. And one day, and when one sheep loses his way, he leaves the 999 and goes after this one sheep. Why? Because you are more valuable than many, many spirits. I close with this quote, Christ Object Lessons 189. Our salvation does not come through our seeking after God, but God seeking after us. My friends, today, no matter what you go through, the solution to every single problem in life can be found at the foot of the cross. No matter what it is that you're, you're dealing with, no matter what it is that you're confronted with, Jesus can find your solution if you put your trust and faith in him. You are God's sparrow people and you are more valuable than many, many sparrows. Father God, we're just thankful for this day. We're thankful for the blessings that you bring to us. We're thankful that you remind us that we are of value to you. We are even more valuable than the fifth sparrow that was sold as having no value at all. We're even more valuable than that. As our faces vary, so do our needs. I look at this congregation. And Father, you see what each and every person deals with or wrestles with or struggles with or confronted with. And I pray for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit to be with each and every one in this congregation today. Whatever they're wrestling with, whatever they're dealing with, may they know that with Jesus, it can be fixed. That whatever they're struggling with, that, that Jesus, with Jesus, it can be solved. If we put our trust and our faith and our confidence and our hope and our dependence on him. Forgive us of our sins, Father. Forgive us when we have missed the mark and create within us a clean heart. And renew your spirit within us. And try us one more time. As our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, if you want God to bless you in a very special way, if you're dealing with something right now, no one knows, maybe just you, 
but you want God to remember you in this prayer, I just want you to raise your hand and lower it. If you need special prayer, if you need special deliverance, if you need special uh, solving of a problem and you don't know what to do, but you want to depend upon Jesus, raise your hand and, and lower it. If you're struggling with something and you need victory in your life and you want Jesus to give you victory in your life today, just raise your hand and, and lower it. If you don't know what to do or where to turn or where, where to go and you have a decision that needs to be made and you don't know which way you go, but you know that Christ knows the best way, that Christ's way is the only way for you to go, but you want to know what his will is for you, just raise your hand and, and lower it. In. Father God, we just pray for your spirit. We pray for your guidance. We pray for your direction. We pray for you to lead and direct in everyone's life. May they always know that his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. May the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts will always be acceptable in thy sight. For you are our strength and you are our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. sermon thank you so very much it's hard to talk behind these things huh it's rough it really is a hard thing to do so we're at the conclusion of our service guys thank you so very much again for for coming out here and supporting us uh those of you guys watching continue supporting us uh via our youtube channel uh i'm gonna go ahead and dismiss please bear with the heat we're on our ac but it's gonna be um, it's gonna be a challenge that we're gonna face. Okay, uh, we have food, so don't leave. We have food for you. Uh, so so please stay 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 to fellowship a little bit. There's food. It's it's served already. Um, so please go ahead out the double doors around the corner and in the back we will be serving food as well. So those of you in the very back row, uh, I see uh, different families.